Inawood psychosis or true demons. Sometime last winter, I decided to try living alone in the woods for 40 days. I'm still struggling to take in all that happened. I feel something ominous, what, I can't say, really exists somewhere in the depths of that forest. At the same time, I can't deny I was experiencing a certain level of psychosis while I was there. It's all just so blurry. But I know it wasn't all hallucination. I just don't know where to draw the line. There wasn't really a specific reason for my wanting to go. Just a sense of dissatisfaction I guess. I felt disconnected from people, but still didn't have the energy to try and make friends. I was a low-level wagey too, tried around half a semester of college before dropping out due to issues with mental health and alcohol abuse. Life just felt empty. Probably due to my dissatisfaction with what I viewed as life in modernity, I ended up finding a lot of different far-right, radical environmentalist writings online. Just General Ted Kaczynski, in a wood shit. Finally, I stumbled on stories of old saints and Buddhist ascetics, this was the last straw. Their rejection of all things pleasure in order to reach some higher knowledge of life seemed exactly what I needed, all this mixed disgustingly well with the storm of self-hatred and shame that loomed constantly over my head. Addiction's a bitch. At this point, I felt I had to escape somewhere, somehow. I needed to suffer. My family lives in Montana, and my uncle owns some rural land here. I asked him if he would mind if I spent some time out there. He was a little dubious at first, but eventually agreed. Now, all the reasons I gave for planning this trip I only see in retrospect. They appeared in my mind to some degree then, but only as fleeting impressions. Closer to a fever of emotion than any concrete motivations. Truthfully, it was all very manic. I had drank too much for too long to think clearly at the time. To get back to my original problem though, I definitely experienced some fucked up shit. I just can't tell what was real and what wasn't. There seemed to be a genuine force or spirit or something while I was there. I saw it physically, I know that much. I want to say I was just losing it, but even now, with some months of sobriety under my belt, I can't shake the idea I was experiencing something true, outside myself. So I drove to my uncle's cabin there, somewhat deep in the woods. Brought about a month's worth of food, a knife, a hatchet, some paracord, a tarp, and a few lighters. Decided the only substance I would bring was some shrooms. Nothing else. I wanted to quit alcohol, and I thought any other substance would get in the way of properly experiencing reality or nirvana or whatever the fuck. Except shrooms, of course. It's beautiful there in the winter, but notably eerie. Snow covers just about everything, white in every direction. Save the trees, which were black and dead. The only sound out there is the crunching of your own footsteps in the snow. Quite pristine, but completely still, almost eternal. I parked outside the cabin, but I didn't plan on sleeping there. I had seen a lot of bushcraft videos on YouTube. I thought it would be pretty cool to try some of the shit on my own, plus, the overall lack of comfort was somehow essential for freeing myself from my vices of comfort. I needed to suffer. I must have walked a few miles into the woods or so. The alcohol was really getting out of my system at this point. It was awful. Despite the cold, I couldn't stop sweating, and my hands had a slight tremor. Vomited a few times. Still. This all excited me. It was painful, but I imagined this was what the first steps must feel like. I eventually decided to stop right at the edge of the forest. The dense forest broke into a flat expanse of snow that grew out onto the foot of a mountain in the distance. I gathered some wood, made a simple A-frame shelter, and gathered some firewood. I didn't have a sense for how long it took, but the whole process felt quick. I had nothing to do but sit and meditate till nightfall. It was difficult to concentrate. I was in the peak of my hangover by now. Despite the fire and many warm layers, I couldn't stop shivering. The sweating was unending and I was still vomiting occasionally. Felt kinda retarded for doing all this at this point LMAO. 
But, at the same time, I was doing something, changing, growing, I don't know. It felt weirdly right. Night came slowly. I couldn't stomach any food yet, but sipped on some snow I had melted in this camping pot. I was terrified. Occasionally some snow would fall from the trees, or my mind would make up some sound. The thought would shoot through my mind that it was some fucking bear or something. I don't know how long it took me to fall asleep. The dreams began the first night. They weren't visual at first. Still, the most vivid I've come to experience. I cannot begin to describe the horror. It was as if I was plunging from the top of some cliff or airplane. The air slashed past my body and burned like fire. At the same time, I was completely trapped. I could not move, I could not scream. Some force pinned me to the floor. I could feel its gaze stab into me. Time stopped for all of this. I woke suddenly. It took me a minute to reorient myself. I still felt a little nauseous and shaky, but, thank Christ, it was better than when I first arrived. I sat stunned for a moment, but then went on to sip some water. I rekindled the fire and managed to eat some bread. I meditated and settled down after breakfast, before deciding to take a walk in the forest. These are the parts one can't make sense of. I noticed something about the trees near my camp. They had these signs of rot or fungus. Even more strange, these little holes of rot smelled putrid, like an animal had died or something. The trees looked truly corrupted. Of course, I didn't think much of these things at first. Who would? But this is all just the beginning. These signs would come to mutilate the landscape like tumors. If all I had experienced during this trip were these mental impressions of horror and pain, it would be much easier for me to write it off as purely psychological. But these emotions actually manifested themselves before me physically. I could see it, touch it, smell it. It was there. The signs only grew. To address some of the posters though. I'm the first to admit I went in not knowing what the fuck I was doing lol. It was a moment of desperation. I needed to change my life somehow, anyhow, and I thought this was the best way to. I needed to escape. It was pretty retarded, true. But I just wasn't in a great headspace. I have no doubt it was some kind of infection, but it looked different than this. It started out as these small craters in the trunk, the edges of which were surrounded by splotches of these white yellow circle. I wouldn't have noticed it if it weren't for the smell. The rest of the day was uneventful. I roamed around here and there, meditated a few times, and wrote in this little journal I brought with me. What you'd expect being alone out there. I can't complain though, it was comfy. Went to bed. Had another pretty shitty dream, but it was very similar to the last. Not worth describing again. The next morning I decided to really begin my journey towards enlightenment or whatever the fuck. One of the posters mentioned fasting, I'd like to apologize to him personally for not being comfortable for starting right away after a fit of vomiting for half a day. Either way, I decided to try the shit now. The first day I started wasn't too bad. I was a little hungry, sure and the cold was undeniably a bitch. But I truly felt good. In some weird way, I felt I was making the first steps for a renewed life, something truly meaningful. I felt at peace. The sort of presentness I felt from meditation began to spontaneously show its head. Looking out onto the snow-covered land during some of my walks, my mind would just silence itself, and it felt like I was truly a part of this still beauty. The forest truly felt like a good friend. Of course, this might only last a minute or so before my mind continued its inner monologue. But for the first time in a while, I was glad just to be sober. Needless to say, this was a bit of a honeymoon phase, but we'll get to that later. The white splotches on the tree had spread a little. At least, I think. Shit wasn't bad enough for me to worry about yet. The night was peaceful at first. The fire crackled softly as I lay beneath the blankets in my shelter, thinking about nothing in particular. 
The soundscape of the snow, which terrified me horribly at first, became something of a lovely sonata, dancing crisply in the cold of night. Sometimes I would close my eyes and simply listen. Then the yowlin began. Some animal, clearly in pain, somewhere in the forest. This kinda dampered my night lol. The animal screamed regularly for around five minutes. The scream was uncannily similar to an infant's, horrid vibes. It seemed that just as soon as the screech had ripped through the night, it was gone. The forest settled down again, unbothered. I felt unable to reach the place I was before and decided to try and sleep. Took a bit, but exhaustion eventually overtook me. The dreams, fuck me. I've read up on it recently, and apparently they're pretty common when you start to quit drinking. Just wish I would have known then. Of course, the dream began with me drinking. I was back home, and the guilt of relapse felt very real, coupled with a gross sense of relief. This all too familiar merging of shame and pleasure hit me like a truck. My mother was there. My dad, somewhere at work. For some reason, I was attracted to my mother, I wanted to sleep with her. I was grabbing her, trying to come onto her, seduce her. She just stared at me in disgust. I knew that my father could come home at any time. I didn't care. She reluctantly let me lead her to the bed. She was wearing a skirt, she laid down and I pulled the panties down. I spread her legs. I put myself inside her. The look of disgust never left her face. As I fucked her, she spoke to me, you don't change, do you? You can't. You won't. She spit in my face. I didn't care. I only wanted to fuck her. I wish I never had you, she said. I came. I started hitting her in the face. I hit her as hard as I could. I was still inside her. I couldn't seem to stop crying. My father walked through the door. I was woken by the smell of the trees. The courtrot smell had spread through the camp, it was unbearable. Mixed with the hunger, now more intense, and the weight of self-disgust from the dream, I felt horrible nauseous. I had sweat through my clothes. I was still hard from the dream. I needed to take a walk, calm my nerves. The infection in the trees had spread again, this time I noticed it. In the trees where it started, long, white worms festered in and near the holes, sometimes dropping onto the snow. I kept my distance. A few minutes into my stroll, and I noticed a trail of blood leading deeper in the woods, the red droplets stained the snow, piercing into the dull whiteness of it all. After everything else, I was genuinely unnerved. I fled back to camp. The smell remained. I got some of the bread from my pack and left to eat it. I just couldn't stand the smell. Only 24 hours, and my fast ended. It was the best food I'd ever tasted. The guilt, however, was tangible. It probably sounds kinda retarded, but it was almost heartbreaking. I had let myself down so early in. I didn't know if I could continue this, maybe I was just doomed to the life I'd led thus far. Still, that bread was the only real comfort I had then. I retreated to some other part of the woods and sat a while. I could only stare down at the ground. I didn't know how to deal with it all. The dreams, the creeping feeling about the woods, my early failure, I had drank for so long, I'd kind of forgotten how to deal with all aspects of life. Something was off. I felt stuck in this pit of guilt and uneasiness. After a while, I figured the best thing to do was meditate. It took what I imagined was 10 minutes or so before I really started to feel some emotional recovery. My mind finally slowed itself, all I was aware of was the ins and outs of my breath and the occasional breeze of crisp winter air. I opened my eyes. Things weren't so bad. My surroundings were normal, the smell and the blood and the rot in the trees were far beyond my mind's eye. I just sat and bathed in the serenity of the forest. The best way to put it is that it comforted me I guess. Almost like an embrace. I sighed and went back to camp. 
the smell had died down. Or maybe I'd just gotten used to it. Regardless, I felt remotivated. I was reminded why I came here, and that any change doubtless takes some time. I asked for this, I wanted, no, needed, suffering. Pain must be a part of growth. Who knows why? I wrote about this in my journal before resuming meditation. Save some yowling at night, the smell in the morning, it was always strongest then, and the barrage of revolting dreams, I continued somewhat steady for the next few days. I decided to eat at least once a day instead of the continual fast, as it seemed a fair compromise. For now, I felt it best not to return to the woods. Despite being able to push through, it was all very disorienting. I could make no sense of time throughout my trip. Almost like it had stopped in the forest, the sea of white and silence that engulfed me had maybe abandoned all concepts of decay and degeneration long before man had even stepped foot in these swathes of land. I didn't belong. The continual movement and scatter of my mind seemed blasphemous in this place, born from evil. I could not tell the difference between the hour and the minute, perhaps, here, there was none. It took a long time to fight through the boredom. Still, my initial love for this place grew. It was always there with me, no matter the suffering. I can't remember a better friend. I grew past my concerns for those few days. I saw the progress I was making, for once in my life, I felt some semblance of peace. It was night time again. I laid on my side, poking at the fire. I yawned. The yowling started again and startled me at first, but I had learned to ignore it quickly. Then it stopped abruptly. Footsteps began to ring out from the forest and break through the stillness of the night. The sound was too familiar, the footsteps of a man. I held my breath. Or, more accurately, I couldn't breathe. The heat from the fire suddenly ceased. Each step got audibly closer as the man walked. Hello. Who is that? I cried out. The steps stopped. I froze beneath my shelter for what felt like an hour. I could hear nothing but the ups and downs of my own chest. Finally I stood and looked behind the camp. Three creatures stood. They must have been the size of small dogs, and they had these rat-like tails. I would have thought they were possums if it weren't for their abnormally long muzzles and bodies, which seemed thin enough to imply malnourishment. Even more strange, they were pitch black, silhouetted by the snow. Their darkness even stood out in the night, as if they were closer to an absence of light than any real thing. Like they were antithetical to reality itself. They stared. They stood and stared, and I felt their gaze. I thought they had invaded my body with their hate. I couldn't move. I just stared back. Eventually I broke myself out of it. Get! I yelled, and I made a snowball and chucked it less than a foot away from them. They didn't move. I still felt them staring. They refused to break eye contact. The one turned to the other. They got down from their hind legs and walked off into the dead of night. There was a ghastly relaxation in their stroll. Mocking me, they were in control. I went to sleep a while after. For the first night since I had been there, I had no dreams. Simply darkness. I woke to a mutilated hairless rabbit. Took me a second to comprehend before it all hit me. The throat had been cut and the front legs ripped off. The animal was gutted. Its innards sprawled out in front of it. The eyes bludgeoned. Front half of the head smashed. I screamed and jumped up, knocking over my shelter in the process. I was shocked. The corpse wasn't fresh. The blood was brown and curdled on its body and onto the snow. The rabbit's intestines were filled with squirming, white worms. The more I looked, the more they seemed to be crawling out of every crevasse of the animal's body, digging their way out of the eye holes and rolling off the maimed skull. The worms were thin, too thin, and long, at least six inches. I'd seen these worms in the trees. The back leg twitched. 
I walked backwards and tripped over the pile of sticks and logs that once made my shelter. I stood back up. My gaze froze on the dead animal. I finally broke out of my trance. I needed out of this bitch, just a moment to gain my bearing and make sense of whatever the fuck was happening. That's when I noticed a trail of blood around the perimeter of my campsite. Fresh blood. A sharp, red circle round where I slept. I GTFO'd into the woods to clear my mind. Expectedly, this didn't help much. The trees had gotten much worse, the smell burning my nostrils. The rotten holes had pierced the bark and gone deep in the wood. Dead rabbits littered the snow. All hairless, their mouths and slit throats covered with some foam and infested with worms. My chest went tight. The rabbits all had some form of mange. Small splotches of hair still festered about their bodies. Their bare skin was yellow and sick. A white film had grown over their eyes. At this point, I prayed. To who or what, I don't know, to whoever might listen. Please, I asked. What does this all mean? Am I meant to be here? Why is this happening? I fell down the snow and began hyperventilating. My body trapped itself in the fetal position. Was I cursed? Was I always doomed to fail? Was the universe just telling me to give up? I didn't know. My mind ran in loops and circles. Help me, I prayed. Please, anything, tell me something and everything flashed into white. When I came to, I was covered with snow. I stood up and brushed it off. It was late in the day, and the sky had turned a bright gold, which illuminated the fields of snow around me. The rabbits were gone. The trees had returned to their old selves, clean, without disease or blemish. I looked up into the clouds, snowflakes fell heavily. It quickly occurred to me I had to rebuild my shelter and fast. I ran back to camp. The land was covered with the night by the time I had finished putting it all back together. The snowfall had turned into something of a light blizzard and I was unable to make a fire. The only warmth I had was the clothes on my back and the blanket I had brought with me. I'd never been more cold in my life. My body shook uncontrollably. I thought I might die here. I looked out into the storm in front of me, utterly hopeless. Then, long in the distance, a figure appeared. They walked toward me. I thought it must be a miracle. I told whoever I prayed to that when I got back home alive, I would be the most devout Catholic or Muslim or whatever he was, fuck if I knew. I stood and waved my arms frantically. I cried out for help as the billows of snow pummeled into my body. As the figure came closer, I began to notice something weird. The person had a warmth to them, and I could feel it with each passing step they took. The cold gradually disappeared as they walked towards me. Then I saw them in the midst. It was a woman. I strained my eyes. She was nude, her pale body glistened in the haze of falling ice. From what I could make out of her, she was extremely beautiful and well-proportioned. I thought I must be dreaming. She stopped 20 yards in front of me. It was as if I had a fire in front of me. Her blonde hair fell to her ankles. Her cheeks were slightly red and the whites of her eyes sparkled in the rush of snow. She smiled. Her hands reached out gracefully towards me. She beckoned me. She glowed amidst the storm. I still couldn't make sense of any of this. I stared, dumbfounded. This had to be a dream. Nonetheless, my legs started walking towards her, involuntary on my part. Her smile welcomed me, her supple body pulled me in. Before I made any real distance, I saw them. The three creatures that I'd seen before. They were just as black as before, if not more so. Their darkness illuminated the snowstorm around them. They stood behind the woman. Again, they glared into me. Aghast, I fell backwards onto the snow. She walked slowly towards me again, the creatures close behind. The heat she emitted suddenly vanished and I was in a cold again, 
The snow soaked through my pants and the back of my jacket as I pushed myself away frantically. Get away. I screamed at them. Leave me alone. The fear and the cold became so intense I thought I might go into shock. My body went numb. They got closer. Fuck off. Leave. Someone help me. Help. They stopped. They stood only a few feet in front of me. A gust of sleep passed in front of them. I felt the force of the wind and covered my face from the ice. I looked back up, in my horror, they had disappeared into the storm. The night was long. I didn't sleep. Huddled beneath my shelter, the cold ate away at me. I was too scared to lie down, if any shit went down, I wanted to be ready to run. Shadows of men would rise in the midst of the snowstorm, and just as soon disappear back into it. The crashing of snow felt as if it tore away at my skin, each moment out there burned like fire. I had more than one panic attack. It felt like years before the morning came, and the falling snow didn't end for even longer. Once the storm finally cleared, I packed my shit right away. There was no way I could stay here. At the very least, I'd go back to the cabin and figure out what the fuck was happening. Most likely though, I felt this way then, I was just gonna hop in my truck and haul ass back home. All my shit in my bag, I started hiking. The smell had returned and gained a quality of omnipresence. No matter how far I went into the woods, the trees, every one of them, had rotted to the core. Dead squirrels and rabbits and other animals littered the forest floor. There was no escaping the smell. The only live animals I saw appeared in flashes in the brush. Always dead, black eyes, always foam spewing from the mouth. I didn't stay in one place long enough to see much more. The shadows followed me. They appeared in the corners of my vision, but vanished as soon as I'd look in that direction. Occasionally I even heard voices. Small, muttering conversations which stopped as soon as I took notice. I squeezed my hands to my ears, against my head, still, the voices remained. I can't begin to describe the relief I had at arriving at the cabin. I ran inside. Locked the door immediately. There was a cot in the back of the cabin. Hands covering my face, I sat down on it and cried. For an hour I laid in bed, staring up at nothing in the ceiling. What the fuck was even happening? Was this some weird withdrawal shit I was going through? Maybe I was just looking into things to shit too deeply. Was that woman even real? These thoughts ran much too fast through my head for me to answer. I decided none of these thought circles would come to anything substantive. I thought I should meditate. This had gone well for me in most of my experience here, fuck it. I sat on the bed and counted my breath for some time. I stopped. I tried to make sense of everything. Something I fundamentally may never understand has happened to me, I thought. Something necessarily supernatural. It could be some sick part of my mind, or something really out there, in these woods, but I don't care. Undoubtedly, I believed I was approaching some reality or truth that few have ever experienced. What do I have to lose? At this point in my life, do I really care that much if I live or die? Here, however, I know I mean something. Through my own knowledge, I have gained some greatness and superiority over men. No matter what, I must carry through. I've risen above humanity. I've achieved enlightenment, and I can only go further. I would rather die as a god than continue life on the earth below. Thinking back now, the only reason I can say I came to these ideas is some consequence of mania, no matter the hints of truth to them. I was, undeniably, in the worst headspace I've been in in my life. It was then, in my delusions of divinity, that I had been called to go all the way. I would take the shrooms. I took a few hours preparation before beginning. Firstly, I promised myself I'd stay inside the cabin while tripping. I'd lock the door. I would not go outside under any circumstances. After this decision, I meditated for a long, long time. 
I needed to empty my mind completely. Strip all my elements of humanity and open myself up to the will of the forest. What she chose to tell me. When I stopped, I just stared at the wall. In the greatest capacity I could, I had forgotten myself. I began laughing spontaneously. I didn't know why. I didn't care to try and figure it out either. This was my sign, it was time. I ate four grams of shrooms. I wanted to do something near a heroic dose, but this wasn't my first time with shrooms, so I kinda knew what they could do, was nervous to try the dose in its entirety. I know this has absolutely nothing to do with the rest of this experience, but I've never got why people hate the taste of shrooms. I always found them kinda good. Like fungal potato chips or something. A little bitter, but it added something unique to them. I had a friend once who vomited when trying them. Couldn't understand it. Anyways. Once I ate them, I had some water and some food and began to meditate again. I felt compelled to meditate until I started to feel something. The come up began. A near hidden sensation of floating moved in waves through my body, and the afternoon sunlight acquired a certain liveliness, washing over the wood room. I had started a fire in the wood stove. I sat and watched the fire dance and dilate, before falling back into itself. Occasionally, I doodled in my notebook. As the walls around me started to pulse, I got back into bed. The warmth under the blanket was pleasant. Overall though, nothing seemed to happen. I felt I'd had no insights in this room. Neat visuals, sure. But no real content. Around sunset, I began to consider leaving the room. I'd been in there long enough to figure there was nothing to learn, I thought. If anything, I felt trapped. My claustrophobia only grew, I was on the edge of panic. The walls were expanding and closing in. I couldn't stay. I rushed outside and fell onto my knees. My head hung down a moment before I looked up. The vastness of the forest, the never-ending spread of white and trees all around me, rushed into my very being. The grandness of it all, the beauty, the horror, the transcendence. I'd never been so moved in my life. Divinity had washed over me. None of it appeared to me as some rational truth or statement. There was no understanding it, properly speaking. I couldn't put it into words, couldn't begin to explain it to another. But this was the truth. I rolled onto my back, my arms and legs outstretched in the snow. I wept. I'd never experienced such ecstasy and joy, and yet, it remained terrifying. It was all these things, but, truly, none of them. Night began to fall. I let out a yell of triumph. I've discovered it all. I cried. I felt I'd reach where so few men will ever go. I had discovered God and brought him before my feet. I'd made him known to me. A screech ripped through the dark. Something unworldly, from all directions, metal scraping against metal, sharp and wretched, piercing my soul. My heart stopped. I shot up and ran blindly. The shadows returned in force. Hundreds of them darted in and out of my vision as I sprinted through the woods. The corpses of animals and trees rushed behind me, the smell infested the air and manifested into a yellow mist that spread throughout the forest like smog. The dead mutilated animals howled in misery. I had never run so hard in my life. Then I was in a field of snow. I still don't remember how I got there. I was running and running and running, everything jumped from the forest and into here. I looked behind me. The shelter, which I thought I'd taken down, was a speck in the distance. The trees had disappeared. There was no smell, no noise, no anything. Just snow. I looked back in front of me. The mountain stood. It loomed. Completely black in the firmament of night, its peaks and jagged contours stabbed up into emptiness. A path of footprints laid before me. They led to the mountain. My body, without choice, walked slowly forwards. I walked. 
I walked through the flat ocean of snow. All empty. Everything white. My senses stripped from me. I floated through the nothingness. As I came closer, I could see the three figures. All standing at the foot of the mountain. They stared and waited patiently. I arrived. I stood only a few feet in front of them. They'd grown larger now. Near my height. Still, they were utterly black, outlined by the darkness of the mountain standing behind us. I could see their ribs protrude from their sickly bodies. If they had eyes, I could not see them. Emerging from the fog of nothing, animals appeared. Coyotes, foaming from the mouth, with large gashes on the sides and back of their bodies, all infested with the worms. They limped together in a circle around us. They moved in spasm, ripping their heads and legs about, the foam from their mouth flying in all directions upon the snow at the foot of the mountain. On occasion, a few would fall in a fit of seizures. The rest simply danced past them. The creatures and I stared at each other for a moment. Then they looked at each other, as if consulting amongst themselves. Finally they looked back at me. The middle creature walked forward. It outstretched its hand. Long, black, hairless fingers, the fingers of a man, wrapped like ivy around a stone. The stone was jagged and dark, some obsidian piece from the mountain, I assume. The creature stared at me. The coyotes danced. I put my hand forward, palm up. The creature dropped the stone in my hands. The coyotes froze. Time stopped. I felt something in the back of my eye. A strain at first. It grew. It grew and started to burn. It grew worse, something pushed around the eye, out the socket. I grasped at my face with my other hand and cried out in pain. The pain suddenly disappeared. I felt something in my hand. I took it from my face and looked down. In the palm of my hand, a worm, sickishly white, writhed in a pool of my own blood. I screamed. I couldn't stop. I looked at the stone in my other hand. The worms began crawling out in legions and spilled onto the snow. Terrified, I looked at the creatures. They stared faceless. I threw the stone into the snow. Blood spewed from the snow and washed over the land of snow in an instant. Just then, I awoke. Sweat covered my body and I jumped upright. Light blazed across my eyes. I was in the cot, at the cabin. It was morning. Needless to say, I packed and drove home immediately. That was enough of that. Since then, I haven't been into that kind of spirituality. I went to AA, got fixed up, for a little, at least, and I've left all the esoteric shit behind. I had my taste of death and decided it wasn't for me. I know something is out there, something in life, the universe, etc. Some part of me thinks I truly did experience God back there, even if it was in such a little capacity. This is enough for me. Learning that there is some meaning out there, true good and true evil, is enough for me to consider life worth living. I don't need to know anymore. I'm still working a pretty similar job. Retail bullshit. I can't say it bothers me as much anymore. I'm taking some college courses, trying to take decent care of my health, all that. Taking baby steps. I don't need anything deeper than my day to day. I leave the other shit to God. Hey stalker, hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.